All right, good morning. So, um, just making sure I get the sound. Okay, cool. So, um, we'll go back today to finish the sequential data path uh, for a basic processor. All right, so this is the data path that we have put together thus far. And um, you can kind of see the elements of all the, or all the different functional elements of the computer combined through wires and uh, through data uh, wires and control wires. Okay, so um, at a high level, we have our uh, program counter here that we're going to use to load the next instruction. We have our instruction memory, which holds the whole program. We have our register bank, which contains all the values we're going to uh, be using for our registers. Um, we have the arithmetic and logic unit, which will do the, all the arithmetic operations we need. Um, but there are also other ones that we're going to use for um, uh, calculating addresses for the next instruction. So there's actually a couple um, adders, but this is the main ALU. Then we have our memory bank um, from which we can load and store data. This is uh, kind of here separate from the instruction memory, though in practice both instructions and data memory reside in the same memory. Here they're sort of separated functionally um, just so we can kind of see wires to them going separately. And this is sort of a, a simplified fictional processor. Okay, um, And we have a bunch of other kind of things used for selecting values or extending um, our addresses. So um, just to kind of remind you guys, we can look at the different ins instructions that we have. So um, if we look at the data path for the, for the add instruction here in um, red, um, we're going to um, load the instruction from memory. So it turns out that's, a, turns out that's going to be an add instruction. And then since we're adding registers to each other, we're going to pass the different register addresses, the different bits from the instruction to a register bank. From there, we can um, read the data of the, two, of the two registers we're adding. Okay, that's going to go through this multiplexer. We're going to do an add or I guess a subtract if we're doing another arithmetic instruction. Um, and then the result of that uh, will go um, through here, bypass the memory, and then all the way back to being written into the register bank. Okay, so that's our that's our add instruction. Um, for our move instruction or a memory operation instruction, um, we will take the instruction from from memory. Okay. And we're going to, let's say this is a load instruction, so uh, we're going to be moving data uh, from memory into a register. Okay? So we will pass um, the address of, of the data we're moving into here. Okay? And then we're going to sign extend it with one of the registers that we're passing in. Here it's going to be, we're passing a register um, which contains um, the address into here. We'll pass the register one, the value of that register into here. Compute the address that's going to go in here. We're going to read data and then that read data is going to go to the multiplexer all the way here and then load it into our memory. Okay, and then for our jump instructions, um, this is going to be a little bit different, but oh, I guess I'm matching the color, so that's cool. So we still have our instruction coming in, and now we're passing the address that's in here, okay? Through here, we're going to shift it left by two. I'll kind of go over that in a second, but we're going to add it to the address of, the incremented address of the program counter Okay, add that in here, and then that's going to be the new address that we're going to load, yeah, that we're going to load into the program counter. Okay, so you can see at a high level how uh, the same architecture or the same functional uses can 
functional units can be reused to implement different instructions. Okay, let's look at this in, in a little bit more detail. So here we have the main ALU, which will do, um, which will do certain um, all the arithmetic operations, and it's also used in some of the other operations such as load and store. Okay, so I'm talking about this ALU over here. Okay, so here it is again. So depending on the type of operations we were performing, the ALU will do different things, such as adding, subtracting, multiplying, etc. Okay, so basically what controls the type of operation that the ALU does is this ALU operation wire or ALU control, which um, passes the type of operation that this, that this should do. Okay, so this ALU control field should be different depending on the type of instructions that we're executing. So let's say that we're using, uh, that we're doing an add, oops, I got a uh, wrong color code here. Um, we'll discard it. Sorry, y'all. Um, <laughs> so this should be, this should be just black. And I want it add to be blue. Be blue, perfect, same blue. Okay, um, so if we're doing different, if we're performing different operations using the ALU, the code we're going to pass to the ALU is going to be different and based on those bits, ALU will do different things. So for end, we can pass this ALU control for all, for or this ALU control. For end, we'll use this and you'll also see that it's the same thing Oh, I dorked it up in many ways. Sorry, guys. This should be the same for uh, add as it is for uh, load and store. Okay, got it right now. So if we're adding, this is the ALU control bits. If we're loading or storing, we need to calculate the address, which will be, um, let's say, using an add. Um, I guess in some cases we can use multiply as well. Um, so we're going to pass the same bits as for um, as for add. Okay. Subtraction is going to use this ALU control, but it's also going to be the same when we're doing comparing or branching. This is a branch on equal, which is kind of an internal instruction. Um, so for compare, we will also use the same set of bits. All right. Um, and then we have all kinds of other wires that. Uh, determine, for example, whether or not the registers will be writing back data that's being passed here or not. Um, we can have some control whether we're taking data from uh, the register bank or from the address here to uh, compute, uh, let's say, the address of memory or uh, an addition or another arithmetic operation. So we need to control this multiplexer. Uh, we need to control whether or not we're writing to memory or reading from memory. Um, and then, so this, is, this will basically control whether or not um, we are returning any data here or where the data passed in here will be written at that address when memwrite is set. And then we have another multiplexer here. So depending on the type of instructions that, instruction that we're executing on an arithmetic load store branch instruction, we will pass different uh, values on these wires uh, to these different functional units. Okay, so we can combine all this into uh, this data path, which includes all the functional elements we've had. Additionally, it contains this control element. Okay, the control element will be based on the bits that are coming out of the instruction. Okay. So depending on the instruction, there's a control unit which contains some logic. So I guess the instruction's coming in here. Um, depending on those bits, there's logic here that um, just basically a lookup table based on these instructions, it will set some values on these different wires, which will then propagate to all the different functional elements to control what they do, okay? So, Again, not magical, completely based on a lookup table, based on the instruction that uh, the program is executing. Okay, and then you can see here how these, uh, this control unit 
um, activates or deactivates different elements of this data path. Okay, so for example, for an arithmetic instruction, uh, the black wires are the things that are being activated. Okay, so um, let's say we're doing an add, the, the data from both of the registers here passes through to the ALU, okay, and the result of the ALU gets piped around memory back into here. If we're doing an add instruction, we're also not doing a branch, so we're simply incrementing program counter by four and then passing it in back to the program counter for the next cycle. Okay. Um, if we're doing a memory instruction, on the other hand, we will pass a different value here from the ALU source to this multiplexer, which now, instead of passing uh, the data from the second register, it will pass through um, this address from the instruction and then the result will be passed to the address in memory and then let's say we're going to read data um, and, and if it's a load instruction and pass that back to the register bank. Okay, so um, here's a little practice for you guys. Um, let's say we're doing a uh, two instructions, compare and then a jump on equal to a label you can also think of this, uh, these two instructions internally in the processor as a branch or jump on equal instruction. Okay, so we're going to jump to this label based on comparison of this. So another way of thinking of these two instructions would be something like branch equal uh, one value, another value, and then the label. Okay, so think about what would have to be activated in this data path for this instruction to be executed. You can you know, pause the video now and try to assess this out. All right, so here's what this would look like. All right. So we're going to do a comparison of these two values, which means we need to load two values from, um, from um, either memory or from, um, or by passing in an immediate, okay, in this case. And we'll pass those two to the ALU, which will then do the subtract operation. And then it will figure out if the result of it is zero and then throw that up here, okay? Now, the second part of this is that we need to pass the label, which is basically an address um, through here. We're going to sign extend it because obviously the label can be 32 bits because we also need to uh, encode the jump instruction. Um, sign extend it, okay, and pass this up here. Now we're going to shift it, I'll cover this in a second, um, and then we're going to add it to the value of the program counter that has been in, uh, incremented, and then depending on whether the result of the ALU computation was zero or not, this multiplexer will either pass the kind of next program counter in case we're not branching, or if we are branching, it will pass in the result of adding our jump address to uh, the program counter, and that will be the address we're jumping to. Okay. So if we look internally at a, at a jump instruction, what we have is the fact this is a jump instruction, which will be encoded in some number of bits. Um, and we will also have the address, which will be the label or the memory address that we want to jump to. Now, if you guys remember the discussion of jump, inst of jump instructions, what we're jumping to is a relative address in relation to the program counter. So we can move the program counter kind of up or down by some set of bits, which will be encoded here in this address field. So the way we update the program counter, we will concatenate uh, the top four bits of the old program counter, okay? Um, we will, with the 26-bit jump address, okay, that's here, but we're going to shift it left by two. Why shift it left by two? Well, because the lower bits are not significant, right? The um, uh, instructions are aligned in memory on, um, on four-byte uh, boundaries, and so we can basically um, shift this by two, so multiply it by four, and then uh, concatenate um, zeros because the lower bits can be zeros, and then the relative, and then 
add that to uh, the value of the old program counter. Okay, so that's what's basically happening here. We have the program counter incremented by four, and then we're adding the um, our bits from our, our label bits, first extended to 32 bits, and then shifted left by two, add that together to the program counter, pass that in 